In our upcoming video, we're exploring what is possibly the oldest snack food, popcorn. But before we dive into that history and some of the ancient methods of making it, I wanted to explore a little more of the science behind it. So let's explore why popcorn pops, what other seeds can be popped, and then push it to the next level and experiment with a device that allows even more items to be popped, which was invented 100 years ago and revolutionized the breakfast cereal game. Let's try and shoot some food from guns, using probably the most dangerous method to cook popcorn. And maybe even see if we can make our own Cocoa Puffs. First, why does popcorn pop? Popcorn kernels come from a specific breed of flint corn, one that I've grown myself for our next video that's designed to replicate some ideal circumstances that allow the seeds to pop. Flint corn and a few other varieties can be popped, largely due to its hard outer shell, for which it's named, for supposedly being as hard as flint. This hard outer shell acts as a pressure chamber, so when heat is applied, the moisture inside expands into steam and slowly builds pressure. Inside, the popcorn seed contains starch, which when heated with a small amount of water inside the shell, gelatinizes into a soft, swelling substance. As the pressure inside builds up to around 135 pounds per square inch, the hull fails, and the superheated steam forces the gelatinized starch outward, where it then solidifies into popcorn. So for it to pop, it needs a hard outer shell and the right amount of moisture and starch inside. Popcorn is probably the best grain for undergoing this process, but a variety of other grains can also be popped. So I have a, a few different ones that I've either grown or are in the process of growing. So let's try them all out and see how well they pop just on their own before we go to the more advanced cannon. Let's give it a shot. Alright, so I went through and tried popping a variety of different grains here. And got uh, different results. Popcorn is obviously the best. Sorghum is probably the closest. Got little itty bitty popcorn kernels. Wild rice was surprisingly pretty reactive and got some decent pops. Regular rice, also a lot of them didn't pop, but a few did, similar to popcorn. The pre-cooked rice actually puffed up and looks like little rice krispies. This was the amaranth, which mostly just puffed just a little bit. Pretty similar with the quinoa, puffed just slightly. And uh, the teff, you can barely see it, very small. Little puffs in there now. And then the wheat, none of them really popped, but they definitely kind of expanded. But what if you want to pop something that doesn't have that strong outside shell? Well, then you're going to need a special device that I happened to stumble across while wandering around the streets of Xi'an, China several years ago. Following a loud bang, I discovered a vendor using a unique apparatus to explode a batch of popcorn all at once. <laughs> Since then, I've always been intrigued and curious its history and how it works. When you research the popcorn cannon, as it's often called, frequently it's referred to as a traditional method of making popcorn by street vendors in China and other Asian countries. However, digging deeper, I was surprised to learn this foreign technique was actually invented back in the US by Alexander Anderson in 1901, and the exact method was refined in my own hometown of Minneapolis. And his invention was instrumental in producing many forms of breakfast cereals we eat today. As you know, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from guns. Uh, we'd like to show you this process. No one more as the puffing gun, he debuted in the 1904 St. Louis World Fair, where he would puff rice using eight cannons. Often advertised as food shot from guns, this technology was utilized by many different breakfast cereals, and a version of the puffing gun was instrumental in the invention of kicks and Cheerios. What we got here is a little popcorn cannon arrived from China. The box was horribly beat up and like half the pieces were missing. So I had to kind of improvise and build a little frame to hold it. But everything else is here and I should be able to still operate it. It's a pretty similar setup to what they first used when they invented it. There's a variety of like different temperatures and pressures you want for different grains. So it's gonna be kind of a wild guess at this point on which ones will work at what point and how they'll turn out and everything. It's worth mentioning that this is potentially super dangerous. China has different safety standards than the US. Something like this would not be possible to sell in the US. This is basically 
a pipe bomb if it goes wrong. If it overpressurizes and goes beyond the capacities of the actual container, it's gonna explode and that won't be good. We, probably, we might die. So I'm gonna try and take some precautions, not be in direct range of it when we have it going. I have it set up with our ball mill motor to kind of rotate it so I don't have to be by it and uh, hopefully reduce any potential risk. So don't do this at home. Give it a shot, see what it does. This makes me just load up a few cups of grain inside here, seal it up, tighten it up, then apply the heat with the torch, rotate it so that no one side burns. Then once it reaches the desired pressure, whack it open and it all goes flying out. All the starch will instantly expand and you'll have puffed grains. And fully open. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to lift it up. <laughs> oh, that's my fault. So I made the mistake of not lifting it off. The, uh, the lid of it connects to the, the bar there. So when I released it, it could open all the way and just kind of puffed inside of it and trapped it all. And then because it's still hot, I'll have it burnt. Some of them came out pretty good. Tastes pretty good. This looks like more standard popcorn. So they're generally known for coming out more like this where they look puffed instead of popped. We're not popping corn, we're puffing it. Turn you off. Woo! <laughs> That was a successful fire, and that is the most dangerous way to pop popcorn. The result is still pretty good. It's good stuff. Try the next grain. Next, let's do rice, which is what it was uh, originally intended for, kind of the predecessor for Rice Krispies. Their process of making Rice Krispies now is a little bit different, but this is kind of what inspired it, by puffed rice. So, slow it up, just have uh, medium grain rice, see what we get. A little snap, crackle, pop, boom. The first attempt didn't pop much, so let's try again at a little bit higher pressure. Almost there. I to lift it again, but, huh, that definitely puffed. Looks like popcorn. Not quite the result I was expecting. Literally looked like popcorn. Tastes like popcorn. Get almost a little bit more bland popcorn. Yeah, that's popped rice, I guess. Almost like a Rice Krispie, a little different. Sort of gummy. Load them up. It's kind of scary because it just like started shooting way up really quick, right into the red. Less pressure maybe? Ah, it is now a sauna in here. So I think I got it a little overcooked. If you look close, it did pop. Little, little pop guys in there. Mostly charcoal, so puffed charcoal. Is anything edible in it? Not horrible. That one's a little bit more horrible. Yeah. Let me try that again. Let me try a lower pressure, see if we get a better result. Popcorn. After some issues with the gauge, I had to reset and do some adjustments to get it working again. Then, back at it again, this time with some wheat berries. Did it work? Kind of. This is wheat. I don't know if they fully pop, they're just supposed to puff. So we got some dried sweet corn here. I'm going to give that a shot, see if you can make popcorn out of sweet corn. It did not work. <laughs> oh my god, look at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we just drove through a thing of flies. A move a mess. <laughs> it's everywhere. Gross. That last blast completely knocked out the cheap gauge on the cannon. So time to pick up a new one and reset once again. But in the meantime... Since we have the puff cannon now, we are going to use it to puff some cereal. I'm going to make my very own version of Cocoa Puffs using cocoa, cornmeal, sugar, and some oil. I am a great 
baker. I'm lying. All right, here I go. <laughs> Mmm, does not look good. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> New gauge. Who dis? But my beans. All right, so I tried a few different grains and got mixed results with those. So now I'm gonna try something a little bit different. Beans. So we have a wide variety of different beans. We got soybeans, we got mung beans, then we got some green beans that I dehydrated. All your kind of standard bean soup beans. Gonna throw them all in there and see if they work. As I've previously proven by making beer, or at least wine, out of beans, they do contain a fair amount of starch, and these are all dried, so it should meet the qualifications in that regard. And it'd just be the lack of a hard outer case that prevents them from normally popping. So with the use of the cannon here, in theory, we should get some puffed beans. Whew. Beans! They did something. Green bean, pretty much charred. Get the lima bean, nice and puffed. Black bean. Kind of puffed, but not not too well. My beans look interesting. They've definitely puffed. Well, that should be good. Kind of like a chip. I believe this is a soybean. Ooh, that's very hard. It's like a pinto bean, possibly. Also very hard. This might be a mung bean. Not too bad. Try one of these green beans. Mostly char. Not very good. Lemon beans definitely showed the most impact. They definitely puffed and uh, actually pretty edible. So definitely worked. Get a partial success with the beans, but uh, next up we're gonna try some different starches, potatoes and sweet potatoes. Both have a lot of starch, should be expandable. So I cut them up into slices, basically chips, dried them out. Now we're gonna see if they poof, see if we get some nice puffy potato chips or something. It might be better if they were cooked first, I'm not sure. I'm gonna try them raw, see what happens. Well, that's on my shoulder. Alright, let's check out the damage. Definitely work. These guys are certainly puffed. So weird. Let's see how they taste. I think this is a sweet potato. It's like styrofoam. <laughs> they did work. They did puff. They are definitely thicker, fluffier. I think this is a potato. Alright, then last and not least, I have the cocoa puffs that I had uh, Lauren put together. But now they're kind of just dry dough balls. One of the main ingredients in this is corn flour. So that should expand with the starch inside of it and uh, get a little bit more puffier than these are. These are basically just kind of biscuits. So the big question is how moist they should be. I let them dry out because I didn't want them to all gloop back together into one ball. The one reference I found to like when they made cakes and stuff was it was still damp. So I kind of re-moistened them so they aren't completely dry. Who knows what'll happen? Roll it up and give it a shot. All right, so basically everything broke in the last attempt. The ball mill stopped working and the torch stopped working consistently, the camera stopped recording, and uh, yeah, I didn't die at least. I don't think I did much. I don't think it worked. Well, it still a little bit puffier, but not a whole lot better. All right, so after several days of experimentation, trying out the popcorn cannon or puffing gun, these are pretty much all the results besides the ones that are stuck to the wall. There's a fair amount of like trial and error you need to do to actually get good results. Pretty hard to get things to adequately puff but not burn. Probably took years of research to figure out how to make these cereals. So probably not gonna get it in the first attempt. Potatoes and sweet potato, very weird. They don't have much flavor and they're very foamy now. That they've expanded, pretty bland. It just seems like I'm eating styrofoam. If I had seasoned them before, it might have been a much better result. Same with some of the beans. The lime beans are probably the best ones. Well, they're still pretty hard. And then the green beans and such were just charred. So it might be better to actually pre-cook them and then dry them again and then fire them. I'm not sure. Lots of different things to try out. Not a lot of documentation because not many people do this now, probably because it's dangerous. The cocoa puffs were not very successful. They seem to be pretty much the same consistency as before. And my suspicion is that they are just not moist enough. They probably dried out too much. They do have these weird little white specks on them, which looks like it's expanded starch. So I think it was kind of a partial reaction because it didn't have enough moisture. The wheat didn't puff as much as I thought it would. I was hoping to get more like a cereal that like really puffed. These are pretty similar to what happened when you cooked them in oil. So of all of them, probably the rice and the popcorn turned out the best and most edible. Soy corn was pretty good as well. Sweet corn was kind of a long shot. It doesn't really have enough starch to be effective. And that just kind of splattered all over the wall. So that was fun. Yeah, so this has been a fun experiment to kind of see why things pop and what are kind of the extremes of it. 
and uh, tune in for next week's video. We're gonna actually go through the history of popcorn. I'm gonna grow my own popcorn and we're gonna make popcorn. So stay tuned for that. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed this. Thank you to all of our patrons and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.